guys, welcome back to Sha blah, blah. Hey guys, welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna, and if you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four who is in our sixth year of homeschooling. And today I wanted to come here and I wanted to share with you a little bit of an update on our fifth grade language arts. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find us down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. Okay, so I am sharing because we've gotten kind of like, a little bit of like non-stop questions about this. And it's one of those things that I think is just, you know, like so many other things, grocery shopping, laundry, I think it's just a big pain point, right? Reading, writing, it's a big thing. There's a lot of pressure associated with it. So I think it's because it has such a gravity tied to it. It's just natural that you're gonna get a lot of questions. Um, I And they've ramped up again. Uh, as you guys know, another secular homeschooler here on YouTube recently shared her thoughts on the Michael Clay Thompson program, the specific level we're using, you guys know. Um, and so I just got a lot more questions about that then. And I wanna come here and just chat. I, I just want to talk about what we're using and let me just cliff notes it for you here. What we are using for fifth grade language arts this year is the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum program. We used the first level um, and completed that in like <clears throat> the fall semester of this year. And then went ahead and started using the second level starting with the spring semester of this year. Uh, it was one of those she kind of placed in the middle, so, or could have placed in the middle. It was really easy to just, it was really easy for me and my brain to just start from the beginning because we were so close to the beginning. Like, okay, why not? Um, and then we're using that. And we are also using Night Zookeeper because it is awesome and amazing and gamified writing and gamified uh, language arts. Yes, please. Um, so that's the long story short, that's what we're talking about today. So let's start with uh, Michael Clay Thompson. You guys know, or, or maybe you don't know, I have shared here before. It is billed as um, basically language arts curriculum for gifted children is what it's billed as. Do am I like, oh, my child is good? No, I'm not saying that. I just, the more I looked around for kind of what felt next for us, leaving behind the Mazdas program, very easy to use, absolutely love it, nothing against it. I did want a little more. Um, and so I feel like this is a good way to get in a bit of literature study because I like the idea of that. But, and you're gonna see this, this theme comes up in this video a lot, guys, especially for myself. Um, I was, if it isn't fun, it won't get done. Okay, and I'll come back, I'm gonna circle back to that, I'm gonna explain it in a minute, but if it isn't fun, it won't get done. Okay, I know myself. If I'm not enjoying it, I'm less likely to do it. Ditto with my kids, ditto with everyone, okay? We can all pretend like that's not the case, that's absolutely the case, so do not lie to you. I will not lie to you. If it isn't fun, it won't get done. And I'm not saying that it will always be easy, I'm not saying you're gonna do things that you don't wanna do, but I feel like it circles back to like Mary Poppins, a uh, spoonful of sugar, right? So spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. It's just putting that enjoyable way on it, taking off some of the weight of it uh, that helps you get it done, that helps you get the medicine down, that, you know, many hands make light work. And that's not because there's many people doing it, it's because it's better to do things with friends. So, okay, that's how, yes, okay? So if it's not fun, it won't get done. I love the idea of a literature approach. However, I have yet to find something that I feel like is the right amount of effort from me, an expectation from my child. And I do feel like that as of now is the Michael Clay Thompson program in partnership with Night Zookeeper because it is a good, like this, like this, like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, and so, and I haven't talked about Night Zookeeper in a while. I have talked about Michael Clay Thompson. So I wanted to come here and chat this all out with you. Uh, so yes, these are the things I like. I do have a link it is in a full disclosure affiliate link for Night Zookeeper right on down um, in the description box that will save you a little bit of money on trying it out, giving it a shot. So let me just dive into Michael Clay Thompson. If you've been around, if you watched my videos, I made several mistakes in trying the island level, level one. I did not get the print books, which 
meant that it was more work and a little bit harder for me. Didn't love it. I also tried to follow their schedule, which, and you will see this, I'm, I, this is not new information. This is out there. Their program is a little like hard to use in the sense that like it's a little confusing and doesn't give you a lot of explanation as far as what you were supposed to be doing. And even when I got the guide telling you what to do, that didn't work for me. So when I threw that, chunked it out the window and I will try to remember to link that video right up here or somewhere near here, somewhere at the top. It's gonna say how I'm <laughs> up language arts. That one, that's the one. Um, I chunked it out the window because again, if you've been here for any period of time, you know that I do much better when I do what I want, right? If it's not fun, it won't get done. We've circled back. Uh, so I read the instructions, I tried that, didn't love it. So we threw that out the window and started doing it a little bit differently. So I have taken it this semester with this new approach. I have print books, yep, learned that, mm -hmm, I did. I did learn that, we have learned. I've taken print books and broken it down to just one chapter a week, which still gets us through in one chapter of the actual lesson books a week, which still gets us through in a, or should still get us through in a semester. We're doing two chapters of Caesar's English. I'm gonna give you a down shot and give you a little bit more explanation. Or you know what, I, I have already done a down shot. I might give you a little bit more explanation on that in here in just a second. Um, and then, I am, and if you actually read the directions, like even in Caesar's English, there's like a thousand things you can do. There's a lot of optional things. I'm not doing all of those. I'm not, I'm gonna tell you how we're using it, how we're functioning and six weeks in, it feels good, it feels great. Uh, and then the reader books, she is reading to herself. We're not reading them aloud. She's got an expectation of so many chapters a week and she does that and we talk about it. That's, that's how we're doing that, okay? Then we are also adding in Night's Zoo Keeper. Why? Because it's gamified creative writing and it's fun. Yeah, we are, you guys, and I've said this many times, I have not focused heavily on writing up to this point. I am not making my one-year-old write reports and papers and long sentences and things like that because I, one, I don't feel like it's developmentally appropriate. I don't find, find I haven't found the value in it, okay? I want them to have a love of language before we start instilling some of those harder topics. And I know for a fact that my fifth grader is there because she's writing her own stories, like taking blank paper and drawing the perfect lines and making the perfect illustrations. She's at the place where she wants to do it. Now, I want her to want to do it. Night Zookeeper is a perfect partnership in this because it's fun, it's games, it covers grammar, it has Oh, like over a thousand activities that cover grammar, reading, uh, spelling, punctuation, writing, all of those things that are important. And it does it in such a way that is very fun. They get to design characters that are 100% unique to them. It asks them questions so that they can plug in the answers and then take that information back and help create a story. As she's progressed, those answers have gotten more progressive. You, there's challenges. My kid loves a challenge. So that's always fun and very motivating. There's episodes that my younger daughter can watch. I love this in, in conjunction with what we're using for our language arts. It helps, it's fun, it's a great way to continue reinforcing those principles when it doesn't feel like work. If it isn't fun, it won't get done. So this is a wonderful way for us to just incorporate and marry all of these things together. Each one is probably plenty enough on its own, but this is the way that we're using it. This is the way that works for us and we are enjoying it. Once they submit their writing thing, someone else looks it over and gives them notes and they can make corrections, okay? There's someone else reinforcing what we're doing here in our home. It's fun, it's a game. Let me show you some of the things that I'm talking about, but before, before I kind of dive back into the Michael Clay Thompson aspect of it, uh, somewhere in here, I've probably overlaid her actually playing the games because it's fun. But one of the things that the girls were able to do, one of the things that you can do is you can actually get physical print books with their characters. They design them, you can order them, and she's officially an author in print. And it's got her character in this story. Her character. Her character's name is in this story. Her character shows up. Her character is right on the front. She loves it. It's a great and amazing way that they've just kind of given the kids a bonus, given the kids a little extra. I like that there are print options. They send an email blast with more activities. I like it. I enjoy it. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying if you feel so inclined to give it a shot, it's been a nice partnership for us. And for those reasons, I do have a link for you. Let's pop back over and I'm going to show you just a, a couple of the things that 
are helping us find success with the Michael Clay Thompson program. You guys know it's a lot of books. Um, so far in our journey, we've made it. Let's see, we've made it so far in our journey. She's finished the first reader, Alice in Wonderland. I'm actually now reading that. Um, and she's most of the way through Peter Pan. We have finished Grammar Town um, with the accompanying practice. Hang on. Okay, so let me show you. We have finished uh, Grammar Town, which is where they learn the eight parts of speech and the time, you know, all of those kind of in depth things. <clears throat> guys, I am, I am learning so much. We, we've talked about this. I am not good with grammar. I'm, I'm just not. I'm learning so many things. I swear I was never taught. The different kinds of clauses, like I don't remember clauses like ever <laughs> coming up for me. Um, please take pity on me and remember that I did hair, okay? Uh, but I don't remember this ever coming up. And so we're going through and we're practicing together. We've made it through the end of Grammar Town. And now, and, and I'm not, I wanna, I just, I want to reiterate that I am not making her do every single thing that's available. Um, I'm just picking and choosing because, well, I think that's insane. It's a lot, to be honest with you, it is a lot. If we struggle, we do more. If we don't, we move on. I am okay with this approach. I think so many times we feel like because it's available to us, we must do all and you must not do all. Something else that I think is pretty great is these books do come with, um, in, well, in, in telling you how to use it, they do come with like a code where you can log on and print some of the, um, like the, you know, like post pretest, post test, some of the stuff that's in the instructor manuals. And I do, I do like that very much. So that's where we are in Grammar Town. So we are finishing this this week and I am giving her, I printed out from those things, the uh, Grammar Town post test. So I can see where we are in that. And then we will move on next up. We're gonna run them concurrently with her still doing her reading to Paragraph Town and Practice Town. Now, Paragraph Town, Practice Town, you guys know they talk about it. It's, you know, one sentence a day. That's it. I don't have to stress. Am I gonna finish it? No, and that's okay. Okay, so we will go through and we will read Paragraph Town and it gives us more information on the paragraphs and things like that. Now, we have not mastered this, so I'm not stressing about it. Until she's done with kind of the end of this, I don't feel the need to freak out. Okay, so I like this. It gives you a little bit of like how to outline a good paragraph. So again, these aren't things that I'm gonna freak out too hard about until we've got this information under our belts. And it gives you types of paragraphs. So that's what I want to really really come to, I guess you don't have to do it all and you don't have to do it all right now. So here we go, even in the back of this, it tells you, okay, is this like, here we go, writing practice. So this whole part is not something that's in the kid's book. Okay, is this a kid's book? Oh, well, this is a kid's book. But this whole part is not something that is in the text. And it gives you, this section contains exercise and activities to help you practice what you've learned. And it even says, less than one paragraph. This text has not yet formally introduced paragraphs, but the thinking process is involved. Okay, so it gives you questions that you answer and then starts showing you how to outline them right in the back. So lesson one, analysis, what are we talking about? Purposes, lesson two, order, lesson three, so it gives you an idea of what we're doing. Agreement, making sure like things are matched together, chaos versus order, a clear paragraph, lesson six, a discussion about verbals, lesson seven. When to start a new paragraph, compound sentences, clauses, lesson nine, punctuation. So it's gonna take you through all of those things, okay? Lesson nine, paragraph lab, writing a short essay. Okay, so we will get there. And then there's an example on trilobites, academic versus informal writing, functions of grammar. We will get there. I don't have to be there right now. She doesn't have to be there right now, which is why I like taking this more relaxed approach, which I know goes a little bit against 
the recommendation of it. But again, I'm okay with that. If it's fun, then it gets done, okay? So if I can make any of this more agreeable by factoring in things like easier writings or factoring in things like taking just one small bite at a time instead of overlapping all the books, by being able to incorporate things that make it fun, like New Night Zookeeper. And that's automatically fun in our homeschool because one, it's on a screen. Two, she gets to type, which reinforces a whole other set of, you know, being able to use a computer is a whole other set of skills that are important that come into this. So I quite enjoy this mixture together. One more thing, let me show you. Okay, Caesar's English, here's what we're doing. Are you ready? Um, Caesar's English is the vocabulary, which I would just like to point out. It was actually her idea on our family goals. We sat down and figured out our family goals for the year. She wanted to do uh, like more vocabulary practice. She wants bigger words, she wants more fun words. So we are almost, and this is crazy to me, uh, done with this entire book. Let me give you um, what we're doing. So there are about a million and a half activities that you can do in these books, okay? Analogies, uh, Spanish. I'm doing the reading, so I'm reading the things that are interesting. The word search, the word search is the only thing that I am making her do beyond reading along with me. And what we're doing, one second, I sprung for the flashcards, which you could easily make your own. Um, and then we've got binder clips, the ones we're currently working on. And as she's mastering these, they're going back into the back of our flashcards, but I really like this approach. So we are almost halfway done with that, but I just wanna point out to you at the very beginning. Okay, so here, here we go. Let me just explain this to you. Okay, lesson components, core, Latin stems, Nonfiction words, classic words, review for cumulative quiz, cumulative quiz, optional activities. Where does it say? There are so many activities to choose from in this book that if you attempted to do anything, you would have time for little else in life. That is directly from Mr. Michael Clay Thompson. He does not have unrealistic expectations of you. He's given you many options and many choices, but he does not expect you to do it all. As pointed out, if you do everything just in this book, you will have time for a little else in life. Guys, it's available. That doesn't mean you pick it up and run with it, okay? It is okay to just choose what's fun. For example, the word search, which by the way, I absolutely love. I absolutely love that aspect of the, this Caesar's English is the word search, like the, the visual like puzzle game. I love that, she loves that, it's fun. And it's quick and easy. We're reviewing the words all the time. She's using the words, they're repeating the words, which I really like. Um, every like poem that's written about like Julius or that time period, Julius Caesar or that time period is circling back and reusing those same words. So it's like reinforce, 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 reinforce. We don't have to get in the hot tub and wallow with it, guys. You can do it. <laughs> which is another reason I really like the Night Zookeeper program. It can be as much or as little as you choose. You guys know I love that. I like scalable and fun. I like easy and I love things that don't have a heavy, heavy emphasis on me. So I do feel like in that way, the Michael Clay Thompson is balanced very well with the Night Zookeeper because it's fun. It's online. Somebody does it and sends it back. All right, guys. So here is a look at the Night Zookeeper page. You know what? Let me open you up. Here you go. So this is like the main page here and it goes through and it's got all their products and all that's great and all that's wonderful and there's resources and things like that. But what I want you to look at is right here, the curriculum. So if you click on that, it takes you over here to this page and it gives you a breakdown of the different pieces, English and language arts curriculum that Night Zookeeper focuses on. Writing, reading, grammar, punctuation, and spelling. And all of this is for grades one through six. So I've already clicked out on all these. Now this is the complete nightzookeeper.com curriculum here and you can sort it by age and it gives you kind of like a little snippet on what ages it's good for. But what is so cool and you can do this with everyone. So here's writing and it gives you the explanation of the writing program, reading program, grammar program, spelling program. It goes through all of that. But this, I want you to look at this. If you click on full curriculum, it comes up and it gives you like the scope and sequence. So it tells you the reference, the category, the standard that it aligns to. And then right over here, and this is fifth, you know, fifth grade, age 10, right over here, you can click on, these are hyperlinked 
It clicks over here and it explains to you wonderful words with will that tells you where it's at. So that's the series name. These are the learning goals, the text type, key vocabulary, and the learning outcome. So it tells you exactly where to find that standard. And it has this for the entirety of like their fifth grade plan. So you can come down here and you can figure out which activities align with the skills that you need to know. And then it's got it right here. You can see it's got that little call number, the name of the activity there. How stinking cool is that? Example content, learning. I just, I am completely floored because it really, it really can be, it really can be a complete curriculum if you choose to use it that way. I use it as a bonus extra because that is how it works best for us. Uh, let me pop right back over here. Okay, so you can do all of this. There's additional things. And of course, there's like tons and tons of accolades, things like that. Okay, guys, I just wanted to give you just kind of a, I know a lot of you know this, but if you don't, I just wanted to give you just a really brief glance of the level two for Michael Clay Thompson. So we've got the three readers, the flashcards, which are optional. And you know what? I actually don't have one book. There's one book that's teeny tiny that goes over just kind of questions and in-depth discussions for that. There's two parts to the student Caesars English which goes with one part, one book for the instructor manual. We've got building poems, student and instructor manual, and then paragraph town, student and instructor manual. Practice town is, oh, I'm sorry. There's paragraph town. Oh, you know what? That makes me realize I'm missing a book because there's another one of these for the, um, I thought I had them all in here. Practice Town, Practice Town, Grammar Town. Yes, somewhere there's another book. There you go. So Practice Town, Student and Instructor, Grammar Town, Student and Instructor. There's Paragraph Town, Student and Instructor. Uh, one Caesars English to two kids, Student English, or Caesars English, flashcards, building poems, Student and Instructor, three readers to one book about the readers. So, mana, all of this. Okay guys, one last thing is because this was actually a big concern for me and why I opted for the digital books in the first place, not to mention cost, but storage. Like holy smokes, it's like 15 books, but this is all of it with the readers and the flashcards. So it's not as bad as I thought it would be, which again, this is actually a really big deciding factor for me. So I know that some of you like wanna know, like look at that, it's not that bad, it's not. So just, I mean, it's like, Probably the equivalent of the Mazdas, like when we did, I think it was Opal, had like two student student readers, one, two spiral bound teacher's guides and a student workbook. And so that was probably about like this. So it's not any more than anything else, okay? Just, just so you know, this the whole year right here. Not that bad. I hope that this was helpful. It is a lot of information. Um, and I hope that it came out like, coherent, if that makes sense. Like, I hope that it came together and you can see how the pieces go together, like make a pretty braid and not just like frazzled crazy hair everywhere. I hope that this makes sense. I hope that you found this helpful. If you have absolutely any questions at all, if you want to have like discussions about real life application, any of that, feel free to let me know. I just, I've had so many people ask and it's such a touchy subject that I wanted to go over. I wanted to give this information to you um, pretty early because it is a good bit of information, I feel like, and it's been highly requested. So as always, guys, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up. Um, as always, you can find me down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. And don't forget, I do have that link for Night Zookeeper right on down below. Bye, guys.